I definitely approach reactions with a different respect. Uh, a lot of people will say like, oh, it's not a lot of work. It, it is because, you know what I mean? I have to edit uh, schedule posts. I have to make thumbnails. I have to do promotion. I have to do streaming for Twitch to build that. Like there's a different bunch of different platforms you have to build. So you have to approach reactions as a business. You have to approach it as a social media manager. You have to approach it. As, you, there's a lot of different hats you have to wear. Seeing the impact that it can have on people, I think that took it to a whole nother level as far as appreciation, respect, gratitude, and it really humbles you and makes you appreciate what you're doing and the opportunities that you have to even give people the opportunity to laugh at you. Because mm -hmm. bringing laughter is the best thing you could do, in my opinion. Three, two, one. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Reactor First Podcast brought to you by Passion Fruit, where we interview all your favorite reactors in the movie and TV reaction space. I'm joined today by the man, the myth, the legend, uh, the Sherman Kage himself. Uh, Sherman, thank you so much for being here, man. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Of course. Uh, you know, I've been looking forward to this because I've followed you for a few years now since the start of the pandemic we haven't had a chance to uh chat one-on-one -on -one like this we've sort of been in the same circles you know with the same sort of people that we work with um yes. but i'm excited to finally get to talk with you one-on-one -on -one here today uh so thank you so much yeah no likewise man thanks um like i said you know, i've been saying what you've been doing for a while so i appreciate you extending the, the opportunity and i'm definitely grateful to be selected for that so thank you again absolutely um you know yeah I, as, as i said uh i followed the channel for a few years now Mm -hmm. You just uh, started somewhat near the early era, uh, just before the pandemic, sort of things got crazy. Mm -hmm. um, but I'd like to start with getting some uh, clarification on the sort of start of that, of the channel. Uh, because I know the channel that we have as today isn't the first iteration of what you guys started with. You guys initially right. started on a different channel and had to uh, transition because of uh, I think what we could all sort of naturally go through uh, the copyright issues. Uh, could you give us some sort of like yeah. timeline on how that started and how that developed uh, to where you are now with the uh, uh, from the first channel to the second one? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so initially, uh, the channel was different as far as the cast is concerned as well. Um, it was myself, uh, my friend Jerry uh, Long and uh, Sheena is what it goes by. But uh, we had initially started the reaction channel uh, kind of on a whim. Uh, I was doing a podcast prior to doing reaction videos. So I would do like interviews similar to what we're doing now with other people. And I was like, well, I have the equipment. I have the TV. I have the know-how as far as editing is concerned. So, uh, you know, Jerry had mentioned, you know, wanting to do reactions. I was like, all right, well, let's not talk about it. Let's do it. Let's try it. So uh, we started Reanimated uh, back in 2019. So around uh, when Demon Slayer was reaching its peak, I think it was like right before episode 19 came out. So mm -hmm. uh, as, as you're familiar with, the episode was was crazy. Um, I mm -hmm. mean, Demon Slayer at, in its entirety, in my opinion, kind of shifted mainstream anime again in the sense that a lot of people were watching anime more because of Demon Slayer, because of the visual uh, just masterpiece that it is, you know, that UFO right. will put together. So, totally. um, yeah, but... Tangents aside, uh, we'd started the channel. Uh, we ended up having kind of a falling out or differing of opinions because we got like everybody that made reanimate initially. We were all creatives in our own rights and we were kind of like one man armies and how we did things and, you know, how we handled stuff. And then, you know, just butted heads as far as trying to agree on things and, you know, what direction to go. So Jerry ended up, you know, splitting off doing his own channel. Uh, and then long and you know, they, you know, broke off and did their own thing. Uh, and then that's when, uh, Taylor, Javon, and Terrence were already doing reactions. And I was just like, hey, I mean, might as well, you know, make make a new team. So we all came together and, and made, you know, what reanimated as you know it today is. Right. Uh, so, yeah, that lasted until I want to say the middle of the pandemic. Like, I want to say it was like May 2020. Uh, mm -hmm. We had got hit with because we already had a, a copyright strike existing on the channel. And then we had got hit by two additional copyright strikes for uh, Shimoneta, that is a series that we were watching. Um, yeah. And for whatever reason, like that, <laughs> the claimant <laughs> decided to 
claim, I think, because we were doing like two episode reactions at the time. So we had a total of mm-hmm. six videos out because it's a 12, 12 episode season. So they claimed five under one strike and then did one on its own strike. So it was kind of like a dick move. It's like you, you didn't have to give us two strikes. You could have just put that last one under the initial strike that you had in the first place. Right. But um, so because of that, we ended up having three strikes. So we lost the channel. Uh, I made a new channel and then I was telling people like, hey, go subscribe to the new channel. You know, we would appreciate your continued support, et cetera. And um, I started re-uploading the old videos, but I was doing like, it was almost like a, a upload every hour almost. So right. YouTube system flagged that. And then one day I woke up and then they were like, yeah, the channel's gone. The channel's gone. Like, what do you mean the channel's gone? So I go and look and then lo and behold, I have an email from YouTube saying like your channel violated our policy with spam and this, that, and the third. And the channel hadn't been monetized yet, so it wasn't able to, you know, get that that option mm-hmm. where it's like you have seven days until your channel's terminated. If you don't have monetization, you just get terminated immediately. So, right. yeah, so the channel got terminated again. So I had to make a third channel. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, it, it was it was just a pain in the ass, man. So I made the third channel. That's what the backup channel is now. Mm-hmm. And um, we ended up getting that almost a 10K. We were riding with that for a few months. And then... Um, YouTube had finally gotten back to me and said, you know, we're going to forward these claims to the claimant. And then they have 10 business days to reply. And if they don't reply, the videos will be reinstated and the strikes will be lifted. So I said, okay, great. Uh, they're probably not going to reply. So that's, right. that's a good sign. And then lo and behold, they didn't reply. We got the channel back. However, I do feel that getting three copyright strikes, getting the channel taken down and then getting it reinstated. I do feel like that kind of messed us up in the algorithm because we right. could react to a, what was it one? Like, uh, what was it we were watching? Um, I'll so be also about to say we were watching that series. Yeah. hasn't hasn't It's not new. It hasn't been out for years, right? By the time we have reacted to it, and we could post a series like they live a high school boys, whatever. We could post a series and have like 10k to 20k views within a couple of days, you know, because the algorithm was really on our side at that point in time because we were able to get that momentum. And then once the copyright strikes hit, channel got taken down. That kind of ruined the momentum. And then it was like a dogfight trying to get back into the, the right. algorithm. And it's still, the algorithm is still spotty. I don't know. I, good luck. If you if you try to send your channel <laughs> around the algorithm, it's not going to work. You just got to kind of go with the flow and, and see what works and, and what doesn't work. And then yeah, I hope yeah. that you can figure it out. But that's kind of the, the story of how we got to where we are today. Um, of course. Yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, it's not uncommon you know uh, i definitely have heard people you know my friend Yvonne Snow started out the same way she did anime reactions back in the day mm-hmm. and uh she uh had some uh, a close to similar issue where she was hit with multiple copyright strikes almost mm-hmm. got her channel taken down but since then it does sort of mess with the algorithm you know how it sort of promotes you and like, like it does like change things obviously moving forward um yeah. once you had uh <clears throat> settled those things though settled those uh obstacles um, and going through that from a creative standpoint and obviously trying to get things off the ground one once again and then time after that and so on uh was it like discouraging for you trying to just push <laughs> through and trying to <laughs> just like overcome that and like thinking like is this the right way should we try to do something different mm-hmm. yeah like what's going through your mind at the time <sighs> yeah man i'm not gonna lie it was soul crushing because <laughs> you know <laughs> you're, you're like sitting here and, and you're trying to you know get your feet on the ground and trying to you know do something different or do something that you enjoy doing, which, you know, obviously we enjoy doing reactions. We wouldn't be doing it today if, if we didn't, but um, it, it was crushing, man. Cause you know, you, you make a channel, you get, I think we were almost at 50,000 subscribers. No, it was like 40. No, it was like 37 K or we we're almost at 40 K the first time we got the three strikes. Right. Um, so we, we were doing pretty good. Um, you know, within like a, you know, eight month span or however long it was since we yeah. started the channel at that time. But, um, yeah, man, it was, uh, it was hard to kind of see a path forward because we made the new channel and then that got clapped, you know, almost yeah. immediately after, cause I was, you know, I, I wasn't aware of, you know, uploading every hour would be seen as spam by YouTube. So, I mean, yeah, it, it makes sense from their perspective. I get it. Cause it's like, why is this channel, you know, uploading every single hour? Like, you know, I get it, but yeah, uh, it, it fucking sucks that they don't give you any type of recourse to explain yourself. It's not like I could reach out to a human being and use and be like, hey, I didn't know that that was violating the rules. I was just trying to get my channel back up because, you know, right. these are videos that we had out before. Is there something that we can do to, to remedy this? Nope. It's just, you know, can I cuss up here? 
Yeah, sure. Yes. Absolutely. Okay. No, it's, it's basically just them saying like, "Nah, fuck you." Like, you're, <laughs> yeah, you, you, you're nobody. You know what I'm saying? Like, even right. even if you're a bigger creator, I feel like you don't really get much of an option to speak to an actual human being in YouTube. Like, they claim they have these manual review systems, mm-hmm. but I'm like, I feel like that's AI generated because of just of the sheer volume of videos that are uploaded to YouTube every single day. I think it's hundreds of thousands of videos get uploaded every day or something like that. All right. There's yeah. no way. There's there's a team. Of, of people manually reviewing, you know, ad suitability yeah. or manually reviewing, uh, you know, copyright claims. And then that gets into a gray area where it's like, yes, I understand that there are copyright laws in place. However, an AI bot should not be able to determine what is or what is not fair use. That's mm-hmm. not a, right. a bot's determination to make. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I think the system for copyright, at least, um, from a manual claiming perspective, like where, you know, someone says, Hey, that's my content. Um, I'm, I'm going to put a strike against it. You know what I'm saying? I feel like that needs to be altered to where it's like they put in that claim and then the, you know, offender, if you will, has seven days or whatever time period you want to put on it to give a, a counter argument or a find a resolution. And yeah. if it's not, you know, taken down within that seven days, if you're like, no, you have to take it down. It's like, okay, Cool. I'll I'll back off. I'll take it down, and then no cl- no strike. But if you don't, then you get a strike. You know what I mean? I feel like yeah, because YouTube doesn't have to do anything at that point. You're you're giving the claimant the opportunity to say, hey, this is our stuff. We don't think it's right. We want you to either a take it down or b give us credit or whatever recourse you want to make, like ad sharing, whatever. I don't know. There there needs to be that that dialogue so that YouTube can wash their hands of it. They still don't have to deal with like, oh, okay, well, if someone's stealing content, we don't have to really mediate. We don't have to dedicate a team to deal with this unless it gets escalated. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Ideally, yeah, that bridge to be built to be like, mm-hmm. hey, here's an explanation of like how this sort of makes sense. Even if you don't agree, at least let me try to attempt to explain, yeah. you know, what, what I'm doing here. Right. Um, and learning those sort of, uh, you know, uh, ups and downs with like the copyright system and the YouTube system. Uh, did you take away any specific lessons moving forward with the established channel about how you sort of approach your content and how you roll that out? Yeah. Um, have your filters <laughs> so that the, uh, <laughs> that the system doesn't pick it up as quickly. Um, I try not to let the videos run longer than like 10 seconds. Like if it's running like 10 seconds, I cut, I either cut the the actual, you know, video file playing or I'll make a physical cut if we're not saying anything, mm-hmm. you know, just kind of cutting out that, uh, gray area in between. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's, that's really the main thing that I've learned is, you know, volume control. Cause you don't want the volume to be too loud on the, on the anime because then, you know, that makes it easier for the system to pick it up. And then two, making sure it's not, you know, running over a certain amount of time and then three kind of just covering your own ass to make sure that you fall within the realms of fair use and you can actually make a solid case to why this is fair use. Right. Exactly. Um, and, uh, I think that's obviously made easier by the fact that you said you had, you know, editing experience and sort of mm. background with like the technical side of things, I guess, right. what is that background though? Cause you seemed like you had that sort of grasp on those aspects, like pretty firmly early mm. on. Uh, do you have uh, a production or post-production background, uh, there for yourself? Um, so like I said, I, I did the podcast. So that, I mean, I got some experience on the podcast as far as like working with, you know, multi-camera setups and things like that. Um, that's kind of what I feel like differentiated our channel at first, because when we first started the channel, we actually had two camera angles mm-hmm. where I would rotate in between, you know, the angles to kind of give like a something new because mm-hmm. no reaction channel was doing that at the time. So I was like, well, if I do something in a saturated market that helps us stick out aside from, you know, I feel like we're pretty funny. So I feel like that helps. Right. But you know, differentiating yourself and making your own statement, you know, whatever that may be, whether it's in the edit, whether it's in how you act on the channel, you know, all these different things. Um, I, I feel like that kind of helped differentiate us and, and, and stick and put us out. But, right. you know, not only that, but I used to make AMVs uh, when I was younger. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 no, I love, I love AMVs, man, because you yeah. could like watch up and you'd be like, Oh, that look, you know, awesome with this song in the background. So, yeah, um, and it was, it was just fun to editing cause you could, you know, get different plugins. You could add like shakes, you could add transitions, you could add masks, you could add, you know, um, uh, what's that one thing, uh, that people were abusing. Oh, Twixter. That's what it was. Twixter. Yeah. That, yeah. yeah. Okay. There we go. So yeah, <laughs> just using different, uh, editing methods was, was pretty dope. So, I mean, that, that kind of background was exponentially more difficult than, you know, editing a reaction video. The only thing with reaction videos, they're just tedious because you have to make sure you have to go through, put your filters on, make your cuts, 
make sure, you know, everything looks good for the final product because you want to make sure people can follow along. Like, obviously, the, the goal is for people to watch that episode prior to watching the reaction. It doesn't make sense to try to watch on YouTube a reaction video and try to get that episode because you, you see people that come up there and like, oh, I'm trying to watch the episode. Shut up. I'm like, it literally says reaction in the title. Yeah. So you're going to hear people talking and reacting to the show. Right. You should have already watched it in the first place. You know what I'm saying? Like, go <laughs> yeah. buy a streaming service. And if you're too broke for a streaming service, there are means for you to watch it. Like, you, this is the 21st century. There's there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to watch something before coming to a reaction video. But, right. um, yeah, that's 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 my editing background, tangents yeah. aside. Yeah, I uh, yeah, I had a very similar experience. You know, growing up, I uh, did a lot of editing in high school for mm-hmm. AMVs, just like my own personal thing. And that's how I sort of like, yes, yeah, like practiced and like sort of studied how to mess with the, those uh, those tools. Um, yeah. I, I, like in two thousand seven, two thousand eight, yeah, I was actually the most uh the 30th most subscribed person on youtube nice. uh, back in like this, this is back in like the early days of youtube when i was like uh-huh. wasn't i think too difficult to achieve um but yeah. uh yeah and so like from there though i was able to sort of learn how to apply that too like you said reaction videos sort of like the uh nature of that work which is not as complex but it is tedious and has a lot going into going into to mm-hmm. make sure you can pass all those checks and everything right. you were saying yeah um but it's uh you know from there though you had uh, say the production background and like the the steady hands of the technology, so, so to speak, to apply that for the channel. Um, how familiar were you though with the reaction space as a concept uh, when you got started? Uh, not too much, honestly. Like I, I looked at like some of the other channels that were bigger at the time. So you know, I looked at um, you know, obviously uh, your boy Roshi was uh, one of the bigger channels at the time. I mean, still is. Don't get me wrong. Um, All right. Yeah uh who else uh rttv was another one i was looking at but yeah i was looking at what people were doing and saying okay these are the people that are successful at this what can i do to you know make sure that we stand out as well and kind of make our own name for ourselves so one you have to make a catchy name so reanimated i was like okay that's probably as good of a name we're gonna make because i think (laughs) initially it was like the anime gents or something like that like (laughs) something corny i was like nah like this like in retrospect, because I came up with that name and I was like, yeah, this isn't good. And the other guys are like, yeah, no, that's not it. So, <laughs> you know, back to the drawing board. Right. Um, and then, you know, finally ended up, you know, throwing the, the reanimated the wall and that stuck. So yeah. um, finding a good name is, is definitely important. And then two, like I said earlier, differentiating yourself. So having the multiple camera angles, uh, having the, the good video quality, because, I mean, if you're going to join and over oversaturated market that's already got a bunch of creators in that space mm. you have to have some of the best if not the best quality whether that's audio quality whether that's video quality preferably both yep. you know um good editing like all these things are very important to make sure that you stand out in an oversaturated market and sometimes you i mean some people they they have it set up to where it's like okay we have a good vibe so we can all just like sit down and make a reaction we can record on a potato and people are still gonna love it and if that works for you fine but i <laughs> I personally feel like having good quality makes it that much not easier but it does help your chances of you know getting noticed and and blowing up because production quality does matter in my opinion yeah absolutely um i definitely agree with you there uh, and you try, you talk about the name reanimated, obviously mm-hmm. indicative of the fact that you guys watch animated series, anime reactions, so on. Uh, what was your personal history with anime, I guess, uh, prior to the channel? And how did you sort of bring that into the uh, interest for the channel itself? Um, so prior to the channel, uh, I, the channel has definitely made me watch a lot of things I never would have <laughs> looked at otherwise, for sure. Yeah. But um Prior to the channel, you know, I, I grew up watching anime. Um, I, I was a tsunami kid, like, as a lot of people in America were. Uh, so that's why I got introduced to like Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, uh, Big O, uh, Yu Yu Hakusho, Cowboy Bebop, et cetera, et cetera. You know, the list goes on, Full Metal Alchemist, whatever. Right. Um, so I started off watching all those different things. Um, and I didn't really get like too many friends that had watched it growing up. But after I had graduated, you know, obviously, you know, there's the stigma well not i don't feel like it's the stigma anymore like i feel like now in high school middle school whatever you can go in there and be like yeah i watched x anime and they're like oh yo me too like did you see this blah blah, blah. like i feel like yeah. you can have that open dialogue now but when i was growing up if you watch it it was like oh, why are you watching cartoons like you know you're like everybody was watching like you know vh1 and you know reality tv shows <laughs> and all this other stuff and they're like oh you're watching you know kitty cartoons and stuff like that so yeah. I, I just i didn't even tell anybody that you know what i'm saying unless unless i was cool with you and you actually knew me i wasn't really <laughs> open about 
you know, my love of, for anime at the time. Right. But once you graduate high school, nobody gives a shit anymore. You know, all those status things and, you know, trying to be popular, all that goes out the window. So you're able to be yourself more. So that's when I was, you know, introduced to, you know, more people that liked anime and, and you know, my friends that liked anime and started discussing it with them as well. Um, yeah. So that's, that's kind of my background with anime prior to that. Yeah, uh, I, I've heard it the same thing, you know, from other creators. Uh, Adonis Xavier most recently came on and oh, yeah, talked about the same thing. Him. Yeah, he uh, yeah. had the same issue, you know, like growing up. It's just like that thing of like you didn't really share that stuff with other people because it was, mm. wasn't as widely accepted and accessible to people. Now anime is very easy, easily accessible it's on all platforms for mm. anyone to kind of grow up with and be inundated with. Uh, and finding your yeah your tribe your group in that sense uh, especially now for the channel uh, the core group that you have with uh, Taylor Terrence and Javon mm -hmm. how did you guys come together for that how did you meet the the whole crew as we know it today oh man so well okay I'll start with Taylor since technically I've known Taylor the longest or known of Taylor the longest so me and Taylor actually grew up in the same neighborhood um mm -hmm. I just didn't really interact with him too much when we were younger but um yeah, we grew up in the same neighborhood, went to the same middle school, went to the same high school. Uh, he was he's a couple years older than me. So, um, you know, he graduated before me and all that stuff. But yeah, so that's that's how I knew Taylor. And then, um, you know, we were friends on Facebook and stuff and we ended up uh, linking up, uh, you know, and, and talking right. through Facebook after, you know, high school. Obviously, like we went to um, something in the water, which is a, a concert in the area uh, that we have in, in the Virginia Beach area. Mm -hmm. um, so we had linked up there and then, you know, we were just chopping it up and, and chilling after or or after that. Yeah, excuse me. Yep. Yeah. So there was that. Um, Javon, I met at a Schoolboy Q concert at <laughs> ODU, which is a uh, college in uh, Norfolk, um, Virginia. But yeah, I met him out there. Uh, so he was friends with my friends and um you know, we linked up and, you know, we, we've been cool ever since. Um, right. And then Terrence, so he's still actually active duty in the military. He was stationed in New Mexico at the time. And he was a friend of our friend, Tim. And we all would play online games together. So we play like Grand Theft Auto five together, which is crazy that it's still hasn't had six come out yet. Cause we were playing yeah. Grand Theft Auto five back in like 2012, 2013. Right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Grand Theft Auto Five. If we played like Division, Destiny, like you know, all these different games we play together, um, and and we kind of met through PlayStation. And then um, he was in the area in Virginia one time, and uh, me, him, our boy Mills, Javon, we all like kicked it. They stayed at my place. We had yeah. a party. It was a good time. Um, nice. So yeah, that's that's kind of how we met everybody. You know, those those are my dogs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then uh, bringing them into the fold for the channel, uh, mm -hmm. did you had to explain to them sort of what the concept was and like, you know, uh, sort of feel them out in terms of like how they would, uh, how they would feel on camera doing that type of stuff. Yeah. I think that's uh, a conversation you kind of have with everybody initially that, that comes on a reaction channel. It's like, Hey, you know, this is recorded. Like I get there's a camera here, but you know, it's not really that big of a deal. If you do it once, you could do it twice. You could do it a hundred times. You know I mean? It's just right. like you're hanging out. Like I try to, I try to make it, especially if it's your first time, I'll try to make it as comfortable of an experience as possible where it's like, it's it's just us. Like, don't worry about the camera. Don't worry about the microphones. It's literally just us. We're watching something. We're talking about it. We're joking around. You know, I wanted to kind of feel like a homey vibe on the couch where it's like, okay, these are people that I would hang out with outside mm -hmm. of, you know, reactions. Like these are, you know, genuine cool people, um, right. which we are. It's not like I'm giving a, a persona, that, you know, we're cool and chill and we're actually stuck up assholes outside of it. That's, but <laughs> right. you know, I, I want to emphasize that and make it comfortable so that they understand like, no, this is like, we are selling ourselves, you know, we're selling what the vibe is. We're selling what our actual environment is like and what it's like to interact with us. So Absolutely. Yeah. Um, that's, I think that's very important to convey to people that are one coming to actually react and then two for the viewers as well to make them feel comfortable because a lot of people uh in the anime space at least from what i've seen doing reactions because i'm not gonna lie when i started reactions i didn't understand why they were popular i was like why do people watch reactions like why do you want to watch somebody else watch something but right. it made sense once people kind of started giving their experience because some people were saying like you know i don't really have friends to watch anime with so when i watch with you guys it's like i'm watching it with my friends even though i'm not there physically i still feel that 
sense of camaraderie. I still feel like I can watch it along with you guys. So that that was actually really dope. And then, you know, obviously people want to see how other people react to something. You know, they yeah. want to see like, OK, this was a really hype scene. I want to see if somebody else felt the same exact way that I felt about it. Or if they didn't, why didn't they feel that way? And kind of just get a different opinion. Right. Um, and I feel like over time, people just like reactions for the reactors. You know, they end up, you know, knowing the reactors' names. They end up knowing their personality types. They end up exactly. getting excited to see how one reactor over another reactor is going to react to this. You know what I mean? Like, those things kind of all come into play. And it's like an amalgamation of excitement for the viewers now because, like, I want to see you guys i don't care about the anime like i care about the anime but i want to see you guys and how y'all feel about it and what your opinions are and that i think is is one of the best things about doing reactions or the most fulfilling things i should say yeah yeah having that uh community that understands you understands yeah. like the the inside jokes the running gags so on so that yeah. way they, they come exactly. to see expecting you know how your experience is going to differ from anyone else's and how to in relation to the material yes it's almost like when you're watching an anime and you learn certain characters tics and mm -hmm. and things yeah. that they do and how they act and how they react to certain situations you can you can tell like okay the way this situation is brewing i know this character is going to react this way right yeah and and you're excited to see that that come out so similar <laughs> concept with reactors you know you yeah. you learn their personalities you know how they react to things and they're like i can't wait to see how they react to this like i can't wait to see <laughs> yeah. their opinion on this so yeah exactly uh yeah and uh with anime i think that brings out a lot of you know sort of like really high emotions because it's like such a wide landscape of yeah. you know uh, uh life stuff action shown and so on mm -hmm. uh and in the, when you first started that first year you had a full plate yeah demon slayer vinland saga you know fire force dr stone a great bunch year. of like you know really great shows <laughs> great year. uh yeah do you recall that initial push of having that first year and like just being able to sort of manage uh the channel on top of all the obstacles you're going through, but also just keeping up with all the shows and all the episodes mm -hmm. that were coming out at that time all at once. Yeah. So it was actually, uh, it's interesting, like looking back on it and, and kind of seeing how things played out and, and just the sheer volume of what we were doing, because initially my mindset was we have to be first with the upload if you're not first you're last or if you're right. not one of the first you get lost in the algorithm so anytime my hero academia would drop we would try to react like early in the morning like say because eastern coast or east coast time is like super early i know for west coast it's extremely early but yeah um yeah we would try to be in here like 9 10 a.m like obviously it, it came out like 6 a.m i'm not waking up at 6 a.m i'm sorry <laughs> right. um but uh we, we would try to get it out as early as possible man like if, if you're I, I still believe that if you don't upload quick, you're, you kind of get lost in the algorithm. Um, it, now I don't really care so much. I've, I've reached, in my opinion, the milestones I wanted to reach. We got to 100K. Mm -hmm. Everything above that is extra credit. You know what I mean? So I'm not really in a hurry to get first anymore. Um, it's just uh, you have to balance everything, you know, because I still work full time. Everybody on that couch works full time. Mm -hmm. So we're not we're not full time reactors. Unfortunately, we don't have, you know, that luxury. Um, maybe one day, but as of right now, we're all full-time workers. So this is kind of just our side thing that we do. So yeah. I had to be cognizant of not just my schedule, but, you know, three other schedules as well and try to find a happy medium to where I can get majority of the people on, you know, reactions. So the weekends are typically where we all are able to record at the same time. But now yeah. Javon has a kid, Terrence has a kid. So me and Taylor are really the most flexible ones. So it's trying to find that balance and, you know, like, we can't come in on a Saturday and be like, all right, we're going to knock out four hours worth of reactions because, you know, like I said, two, two of the people on the couch have kids. So we kind of have to move things around and, and make compromises, which is, you know, that's fine. That's life, you know, especially yeah. if we're not doing this full time. Like I get it. Um, totally. So yeah, it, it's definitely been difficult and can be difficult as well. Um, especially juggling multiple schedules. <laughs> I remember I was talking to Terrence and, and one time he, it was like, yeah, man, I I had like almost a panic attack one day because, you know, I'm you know stressed out of work. And then I'm like, all right, well, we got reactions. I got to be here. And I was like, damn, bro, like I didn't even know that's what you were going through. So, you know, I, I definitely value, you know, my friendship with you over the channel. You know what I'm saying? Like everything else is secondary and tertiary. Like I'm here, like you're my brother. So your health mentally, physically, et cetera, is what's the most important. So, yeah. you know, I. We, we didn't have that discussion until much later, mm -hmm. but um, I, I definitely feel like having those discussions with your friends is, is definitely important, especially when you're doing um, 
something like that because it is a business, you know, like reanimated yeah. has become a business. I've always treated it like a business. You know, it's got, we've got FEIN, you know, the tax number, we've got, you know, a LLC, we've got taxes that we do every single year. They have, you know, uh, 1099s that they get. So it's, it's been a business. And I feel like everybody that does anything content wise should make a business because, you know, mm -hmm. why not? You get tax write offs. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I always value the friendships over the business. So I always try to make sure that I can, you know, n compromise with them and make sure that they're happy and also make sure that they don't feel like they're like overworked. Like, Hey guys, we're coming in and we're reacting for five hours a day. Like lock in, like, nah, it's, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. you know, sometimes just taking a break and, you know, having people like take their time off and stuff like that. Cause they need that too. You know what I mean? So right. I, I try to, I try to work with everybody, but, um, yeah, it's, it's definitely tough working full time. Sure. And then this has become a full time job when I'm not working my full time job. I'm doing this. Sometimes mm -hmm. when I'm working my full time job, I'm doing this. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, it's all fantastic to hear. Like, yeah. Finding that balance, finding that, uh, you know, a dichotomy between passion, you know, friendship, business, health, all that stuff is something mm -hmm. that I always advocate for. Um, yeah. It's uh, you when people get into the space, it quickly does, like you said, turn to a business because there's a lot of uh, sort of business mind acumen that goes into it. Um, yeah. And if you don't, if you aren't careful, you can slip and you can find yourself stuck in a corner where you feel overwhelmed, uh, sort of pressured by that business sense. And then sacrificing the mental health the physical health sense of things you know yeah the burnout is real <laughs> yeah yeah the burnout is definitely uh, something we always try to help people get through um and then uh when once you had you know i guess over the years finding that uh balance uh within yourself and finding you know the balance for the team uh do you have any sort of uh you know insight how you know say new creators might be able to start if you were able to sort of like reach out to them and, and when they're starting early and tell them hey these are the things to look out for to make sure you sort of have in place so you don't you know get yourself into those corners as we said yeah um i would say don't be scared to take time off because mm -hmm. a lot of people get caught up in you know oh i gotta be first with the uploads i have to react to 10 anime from one season so that i can please every single demographic like you're not gonna please everybody there's always going to be somebody out there that hates you and you just got to roll with the punches. You know I mean? It's the internet. You put yourself out there for everybody, thousands of people to see, sometimes millions of people to see. So when you put yourself out there like that, it's very important to keep in mind that you can't one, do everything. And two, you need to take time off because right. you need to prioritize your mental health so that you can continue to make good content and put that out. Because if you're not good mentally, <laughs> you're not going to be able to give a, a solid reaction and you're not going to be able to even find the motivation to make the edits or, you know, if you have editors, you know, I, I don't know what everybody's situation is, especially starting out, though, you're probably not going to have editors. So mm -hmm. you're going to have to find that balance, but you will find it. It's just being patient, trusting the process, finding your process and then taking that time off. Uh, I'm still struggling trying to take time off myself. I don't really take vacations, but I, I recently took a, a week off and it was fantastic. So, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah definitely take time off. For Vacations, yeah, very important. Yeah, in this space <laughs> for sure. Um, uh, well, the unique thing about that uh, in the time that you had the channel is that you again started twenty nineteen, mm -hmm. then quickly, as we know, got into twenty twenty when the pandemic hit, and that changed everyone's schedules, everyone's sort of work life balance for better or for worse. Uh, do you recall what that shift was like uh, once you got into like the sort of high area of the lockdowns when everyone was at home, everyone was kind of like furloughed and just mm -hmm. trying to manage the channel through the through the era? I was fantastic. It was yeah. fantastic. Cause, That's what I hear. <laughs> yeah. Cause, so for my job, I was working a night shift at the time. However, my job was like, we're doing minimal manning. So we were doing like 12 hour shifts for a whole week, but we have a whole week off. And since we were, we were two people to a shift, what me and my coworker was doing, we were splitting the shift six hours, six hours. So he would have to take the front half or the back half. And I would take whatever half they weren't working. Right. So it was great. I was working minimal hours. I was off for a whole week afterwards. So it was great for productivity. It was great for uh, mental health. It was great for, you know, getting reactions knocked out because, you know, Terrence's schedule was similar. Uh, I think the most difficult schedule at the time was Javon's because he's working, uh, I think, mid, sh no, second shift. So it was like... <laughs> 2 p.m. until like okay. you know 10 p.m. or something like that so yeah ungodly hours if you if you want to be a productive person in society like working second shift is 
horrible <laughs> in yeah. my opinion like you have right. to wake up super early to you know get anything done and you're working during you know most business hours so like you can't leave work to go do stuff depending on your job i don't know what, what people's situations are like but yeah um yeah so it, it was great though and everybody was watching stuff everybody was inside so they had nothing else to do but consume content Mm-hmm. Or start making content. It sucked when you were trying to like buy stuff. Like I was trying to buy a, a, a Elgato Camlink 4K, and oh, I couldn't yeah. find one for my life because everybody wanted to become a streamer. Yeah. So <laughs> it was just, it, it was it was a crazy time though. Um, definitely definitely a blessing though. It definitely worked out uh, in my opinion. Like it mm-hmm. it was great. We were peak productivity. We were able to get a lot knocked out. Unfortunately, we got knocked down by the copyright system, but um, bounced back a little bit and, and got right back to it. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I had a uh, very similar experience again. Uh, you know, I was, well, prior to the pandemic, I was also working a night shift job. Um, mm-hmm. So I worked uh, 8 p.m. to 5 a.m. Um, in that time, it was, uh, you know, I was, it was a slow job. It wasn't like super taxing. So mm-hmm. during the, the low hours, like around 2 a.m., I could just bust up my laptop and start working at my mm-hmm. desk while I just sort of like had to some downtime. <laughs> nice. uh, it's a multitask there. Um, yeah. And then once you got out of the pandemic, uh, or at least, you know, in this time now where things have sort of stabilized, uh, the shows have gotten back, you know, content creation has sort of stabilized as well. Um, it, anime is unique, as I said, because there's so much of it and there's always something on the horizon. You know, there's always like it's just a wave of like new stuff, new exciting stuff to, to go through. And you watch so much. You guys have such a large rotation of shows to go through. How do you sort of parse out the, the decision making of what to even consider bringing into the rotation for your, your next watch? Mm. Yeah, so definitely a lot of, uh, you know, continuations, naturally, because if you you know react to a show, obviously, you would like to see it through, unless it's, you know, uh, I don't know, <laughs> what's, what's something that we dropped? Uh, Ninja Conway, we dropped Ninja Conway, yeah. because that it was just a, it was a shit show, man, I right. it started off strong, and then just went downhill, you know, like, but, you know, shows that have a strong first season, they're getting a second season, third season, et cetera, whatever. Like the My Heroes will pick those up. The Kaiju Number Eights will pick those up. Like a lot of series that have that that hype behind them, that fan base where it's like, okay, we know this is going to be a good series. We definitely pick those up. Um, we try to listen to the people as much as we can. And obviously, we can't please everybody because everybody's going to ask, hey, can you react to this anime that only 15 people on the face of the planet have ever heard of? <laughs> yeah. Could I? Yes. Should I? Probably not. You know, as, as far as, you know, the channel goes like, I, yeah, it, it probably won't see YouTube. And then if you're asking me to watch something, the only 15 people to watch, you probably don't have us on Patreon. So it's not worth my time, honestly. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's just what it boils down to because mm-hmm. I, nothing's more demoralizing than sitting down and spending 30 to 40 minutes on an edit. And then you post it and it's like, Oh, 300 views. It's like, Oh, thanks. <laughs> By the way, this, this is after days is 300 views, not right. within like the first hour, like days yeah. is at 300 <laughs> views. still. it's like, okay, yeah. This is this is Patreon only, or I'm just not going to waste my time. So it's it's definitely I'm not going to say it's not view driven, it's not popularity driven. It definitely is for sure. Um, but I try to engage the audience as much as I can um, within reason, of course. Like I'll do like polls and stuff and try to see, okay, what do you all want to see? Like what's something that you want to see us react to? And I'll have them, you know, all say what they want to watch. I'll tally up whatever has the most recommendations, and then I'll put up a poll and say, okay, out of these two. Which one do you see, want to see us watch first? And then we'll still react to both, but which one do you want to see first? Mm-hmm. And then, you know, kind of go from there. And that I feel like that helps engagement with not only the YouTube community, but the Patreon community as well, because ultimately Patreon will have the final say because they pay us directly. Yeah. So why yeah. wouldn't I give them priority? You know what I mean? Right. So, yeah. Yeah. And uh, balancing that alongside, uh, obviously, the the source material, the manga uh, that you read along on Twitch sometimes and so on. Uh, mm-hmm. How do you sort of decide which material you're going to uh, get ahead on with the manga and which you might sort of stay, you know, uh, uh, first time watch for the anime? How shitty the anime community is for that series. Because, <laughs> <laughs> um, for example, I don't know if you were a part of this saga or if you saw this saga unfold, but there was a point in time where we were reacting to Chainsaw Man when it first came out. Mm-hmm. And I had mentioned that Kobe and I was annoying. I had mentioned that I felt she was useless because she was making the situation that they were in at the time significantly worse by the episode. So I said, I don't like this character at all. And then I shit you not, the floodgates open, like all these people were coming out. Like, well, partially my fault because I said, 
more useless than Sakura. So obviously, you know, you got the Sakura <laughs> stands <laughs> that right. came out and, and started defending Sakura. And yeah. then you had people that were Kobanai fans that came and started like defending Kobanai. And they were like, oh yeah, well, this person, this person, this person, this person dies in the show, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, I yeah. see how we're going to play. Yeah. So not only did I go to war with the Chainsaw Man community that was a Kobanai fan base, I also had to go read the manga so that they couldn't spoil me anymore. So I was like, yeah. now what? I read yeah. the manga. Did it ruin my watching experience? Sure. I still had a good time, though, because the animation was really good. They, you know, obviously took liberties in the animations because obviously the animation typically is going to be better than the manga because you're actually visualizing and seeing the fights unfold versus, you know, reading panels to panels. Um, so, yeah, I still had a good time watching it. And then it kind of just became a point for me to just openly hate Kobana from that point forward, strictly <laughs> off of the fan base being dickheads. So, yeah. yeah. Um, it's uh, still, it's still fucked them by the way, but, um, <laughs> excuse my French, but yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. It can be uh, it can be a rough relationship with, uh, with the fandom sometimes in, the, in that regard yeah. when you have certain yeah. opinions on characters. Um, but and, uh, oh, that's, that's, my, my bad. One more thing. One more thing. Sure. Sure. It just bothers the hell out of me when manga readers come into an anime reaction and they say, oh, you don't know what this character is going to do. No shit, because I didn't read the manga. <laughs> yeah. If I read the manga, I would know what this character is going to do. I'm telling you how I feel right now. Just like you felt a certain way when you read it in the manga at first and changed your opinion when you got further in the manga and said, oh, this character actually isn't that bad because they did X, Y, Z. We yeah. haven't gotten that. So give us the liberty and the opportunity to form our own opinion as we go. Yeah, <laughs> like people just can't keep their fucking mouth shut, man. Yeah, that's definitely not exclusive to the anime community. I think the yeah. reaction community as a whole definitely has those issues. So people, yeah, uh, like you know, taking it, taking you know, issue with the way you judge a character based off what mm -hmm. you only know about them now, mm -hmm. not what you know about them in the future. <laughs> and, yeah, uh, and it's, expecting it's like, you to sorry, know better. I'm not psychic. Yeah, um, and that's such a you know a common place with like the reaction community and the anime community and both those together. Um, I guess over the years, how have you approached? engaging with those type of comments and just sort of keeping your, your sort of like, you know, sanity, you know, widen that, riding that wave, uh, yeah. so to speak. Cause you know, sometimes it can be great. It could be, you know, have lots of like, you know, supportive comments, but occasionally those uh, really wild ones can get out of hand and sort of just like, how do you uh, deal with those? Yeah. The, the positive comments are always great. You know, I love positive comments, but you know, you could have a thousand positive comments, but one negative comment is always going to stick out. It always, it always sticks out and it, and it seeps in the back of your mind. Sometimes it's like, who do you think you are? Like, where do you get off? You know what I mean? So yeah. I take a little bit of extra time and, and care to, to address those people. Um, there's, you know, perhaps some controversy behind that. Some people will say, oh, well, if you don't care, why are you replying? Why are you commenting? It's not that I don't care. It's that I'm letting you know that you can't come online and talk to anybody any kind of way just because I don't know who you are. If you were in my face, would you say those same things? So I'm calling you on your bullshit. And if you can't handle that, I'm sorry. Right. But I'm going to call you on it every time. It doesn't matter how big the channel gets. We can have 10 million subscribers. If I see a negative comment, I'm spending some, some special time with you. We're going we gonna to talk about it. We're going to figure it out. And I'm going to cook right. you in the process. So I definitely I definitely make time for them. I always make time for the positive comments, too. I, almost, I try to reply or you know show love to every single comment because with, with reason because people get a little out of hand with spoilers. There's mm -hmm. certain series where I, I just won't go through the comment section because I'm enjoying it and I know people can't keep their mouth shut. So... Right. They get excited and they're like, oh, I can't wait for this to happen. And it's like, thanks. Appreciate <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I I don't know. It's I, I don't really have any issues with sanity when I see it. Like it's, it's more so I'm going to I make it a point to let them know, like, you're not going to come up here and talk to me any kind of way. You know what I mean? Like people will use the anonymity of the Internet all the time to try to hide behind it mm -hmm. and say whatever they want or spew whatever they want to spew. And I'm like, OK, that's fine. But if you don't have a profile picture, if I can't see who you are physically, I'm going to make some random shit up about you. And it's just going to be true because you can't you can't refute it. You can't deny. It. So I win by default. So I, it, it is what it is, man. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I take special time to do that. And I'm, I've seen some other content creators doing that as well. And, and I'm glad that they're actually addressing it, because like I said, people will get online and they try to abuse you all the time. Yeah. So sometimes you just got to fight back and, and just shove an elbow in the ribs and let them know, like, nah, you're not going to come up here and do that. Like, that's right. not going to fly. So, yeah, I always appreciate seeing you. Uh, yeah. Your, the screenshots and the calls you do on Twitter. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. yeah, man, it's, I, I, I'll put you on blast on Twitter, too. So if they if they want to get some attention, they got it. You know, what yeah. I mean? I'll give them the attention their parents didn't give them growing up. Yeah. Uh, and from uh, 
what I've heard, uh, you know, from other reactors, uh, getting through those things is a lot easier when you have, you know, a group dynamic and sort of like, you know, a support system of like just peers that are around you. Mm-hmm. Obviously, it helps you take your mind away from being, you know, soloed with those uh, those things. Oh, sometimes the people fight the battles for me. Like, I don't yeah, even exactly. have to reply. Like, they'll <laughs> yeah. start cooking them in the conversation. I'm like, oh, all right, y'all got it. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll wash my hands of it. I appreciate y'all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, having the group dynamic on camera with the guys and everything, uh, mm-hmm. do you have any advice or insight for people who say want to uh, achieve that level of, of you know, uh, energy with uh, with one another? Because I know mm-hmm. I've talked to Akasan. He mentioned how there's a, a very distinct difference between solo reactions and like group reactions and how you oh, sort yeah. of manage that. Um, yeah. For anyone who wants to, like, say, achieve, yeah, like having like a sort of group dynamic, um, is there any sort of advice you'd give to them? Yeah, be friends. Actually, <laughs> actually be friends. Actually, you know, hang out outside of reactions. Um, I mean, over time, that that camaraderie and that that chemistry is going to form, especially if you're just starting off. Like, if y'all didn't really hang out much, like for example, like me and Taylor, like we didn't really hang out much prior to reactions. But mm-hmm. ever since, you know, it's like when you come and do reactions, it's basically like hanging out. You know, it's just hanging out with the, with the, with the guys. So um, I think having that that friendship pre established is always great. Um, and it's definitely different doing solo reactions because you kind of feel a little crazy because it's like, I'm talking to myself, but you're just providing commentary as, as you would. Like if you mentioned something under your breath while you're watching something like, Oh, I can't believe this. Or, you know, why is this person doing this? Like you're just giving feedback as you go. You don't want to overdo it, which is tempting if you're doing it by yourself, because it's like, am I doing enough? Am I not doing enough? Like you don't really have anybody to bounce off of, you know I mean? That's something that comes with having that group dynamic is they can say like somebody will say something funny and then all of us just get in on it you know what i mean so you have three other people to bounce it off of or even if it's one other person to bounce it off of you know what i mean it kind of helps validate what you're saying and make you feel like if if you're trying to be funny if you say something funny and they laugh it's like okay i guess i was pretty funny you know i guess i'm doing all right so it's definitely different having that um group dynamic but yeah, uh, I think having a pre-existing friendship definitely helps. And then uh, just trying to be comfortable with that person and honest with yourselves and how you watch stuff. You know, you don't want to fake a reaction. You don't want to overdo a reaction. You know, I, I think you should just be your genuine self. And mm-hmm. then, you know, people will come with that. Absolutely. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, on top of that, on top of the reactions, obviously, you've had over the years, um, mm-hmm. you've also uh, done a lot of this, a lot of podcasting uh, yeah. with other people. Um, you've had uh, episodes on the channel over, you know, years with various types of people, really mm-hmm. interesting, uh, you know, guests that you've brought on. Uh, creatively speaking, what has that, you know, meant to you to be able to have that extra outlet on top of, you know, the usual rotation of work that you, you had to put out? <laughs> My man's did his homework. <laughs> 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 no, nah, I appreciate that. Um, you know, it's different, man, because when I was doing the podcast, I'm not, I'm not doing it anymore just because reanimated kind of just consumed all of my time. <laughs> yeah. Um, but the podcast was interesting because I got to talk to people from different walks of life. Um, I got to talk to, you know, somebody that specialized as not like a, a sex therapist, but like somebody that could bring a spice into your relationship. So it's right. like, Oh, try this, try that. Like do these different things to build intimacy. Like, Someone like that to, you know, a business owner, to, you know, a music artist, to uh, a painter, like all these different people that I interviewed. um, It it was interesting seeing what their backgrounds were, where they came from, how they got into what they were doing, what their, you know, five year plan was, where they were trying to go, their likes, their dislikes. You kind of just get to see different people for who they are and it exposes you to, you know, different things that you didn't know. Like I, I enjoy learning. So I've interviewed some political uh, figures as well. So I mm-hmm. interviewed the mayor and the vice mayor of my city. I've interviewed uh, a delegate candidate as well. Right. And I learned a lot in those interviews. And my goal with the interviews was to also teach other people about things that they might not have known about otherwise. So um, I think that was what was unique about the podcast and doing that. And probably my favorite part about doing it was learning all these different things I otherwise wouldn't have really known about. Yeah. Yeah. Same here. I mean, this is exactly what, you know, I'm hoping to achieve here, being mm-hmm. able to share some light, you know, uh, from your experience to others who might have similar experiences, but don't know how to, you know, uh, reach out and like, yeah. you know, see uh, that they're not alone in this. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, so one of the main questions we always ask here to wrap things up is uh, what has been the most consistent obstacle you've faced in your time at the channel? <laughs> Copyright. That goes without saying, man. Right. <laughs> um, I, I think that, that that system needs to be revised for sure. Um I, like I said, giving the the creators 
and the claimants an opportunity to solve the issue prior to just saying, oh, you get a strike. Mm-hmm. Like I, there, there should be no system where a claimant can say, yeah, you're getting a strike and there's nothing you could do about it. Someone could false claim something and there's nothing you could do about it aside from, okay, let me make a rebuttal or, or whatever YouTube's terminology is for, you know, refuting a claim. I can't remember, but you make your rebuttal and then the AI determines, oh, this is or is not fair use. Chances are most of the time they won't forward it to the claimant. And then you're sitting there with a copyright strike for three months and hoping that you don't get another one or another two, depending on where you are in the uh, copyright strike system. So, right. yeah, I think that system needs to be revised and fixed. Uh, but who am I? You yeah. Know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, it's a good question to the next one is uh, how do you feel you've personally grown over mm-hmm. your time with the channel? Um, I definitely approach reactions with a different respect than I did before. Um, not that I didn't respect them before, but it's a lot of work. Uh, a lot of people will say like, oh, it's not a lot of work. It, it is because at least in my situation, like I'm working full time. So I have to find the time to watch things outside of work. I had to balance schedules. I have to make schedules. You know what I mean? I have to edit. I have to uh, schedule posts. I have to make thumbnails. I have to do promotion. I have to do streaming for Twitch to build that. Like there's a different bunch of different platforms you have to build. So you have to approach reactions as a business. You have to approach it as a social media manager. You have to approach it. There's a lot of different hats you have to wear when you're doing reaction style content. So I definitely have a new respect for it. And I've definitely um, built a a fan base. I don't even want to call them fans, but a family. You know what I mean? Like Mm -hmm. I've built a family with a lot of these people um, and provided I don't interact too, too much on Discord because I'm just busy with other stuff but when i do get an opportunity to it's always love it's always a great time talking to everybody um there's uh we had a, a patron a patron excuse me um that actually passed away and their sister had taken over the patreon and were explaining to me like you know they were in the hospital and they were always would watch our reactions and it would kind of help ease their pain a little bit and you know let them laugh and stuff so i was like wow that's yeah that's not something that I expected to come from reacting. So seeing the impact that it can have on people, I think that took it to a whole nother level as far as appreciation, respect, gratitude. Uh, and it really humbles you and makes you appreciate what you're doing and the opportunities that you have to even give people the opportunity to laugh at you because mm-hmm. bringing laughter is the best thing you could do in my opinion. Yeah. So yeah, absolutely. the fact that we can distract people from their, you know, daily troubles, help give them a good laugh, whatever the case may be. That's the most important thing that I've learned from doing reactions. And and the most growth I've gotten out of it is that uh, appreciation of it and just the humility from it all. So, of course. Yeah, yeah that's a beautiful answer, man. Oh, thank uh, you. Yeah, I think that ties into our last question, which is uh, beyond any monetary or financial value, what is the mm-hmm. most rewarding aspect of the channel for you? Oh, yeah. Uh, like I said, the community, man. I mean, mm-hmm. it's, it's powerful just seeing how much reach you can have seeing how anime transcends region race creed whatever you know religion all that stuff like everybody watches anime so having an outlet to where you can give your opinion on it and have people actually care about that and you know interact with you and and want to hear your opinion i think that's probably the most rewarding part for sure yeah, uh, definitely. Um, we do have a final questionnaire uh, that we mm-hmm. get to everyone here on the show. Uh, just 10 questions down the line for you. First okay. one is, uh, what is your favorite TV show of all time, anime or otherwise? I'm going to stick to anime. I'm going to say Naruto. Yeah. Number yeah. one. Just grew yeah. up on Naruto and, you know, it's done a lot for me. Yeah, it's uh, it, was, it was my number one for a long time, anime. Then I think Attack on Titan just nudged mm-hmm. it. <laughs> just oh, to, yeah. No, Attack on Titan is goaded for sure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what is your favorite film of all time? Interstellar. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what stresses you out? Mm, I don't want to say nothing because I feel like it's not nothing, but I don't really let things stress me that I can't control. Mm-hmm. So I would say probably things that I can control that I just get complacent on like uh, for, okay for example edits like youtube edits i get behind on those all the time so that's yeah. probably the most the biggest stressor that i have is trying to make sure that i meet those personal deadlines if i had to pick one right right makes sense um what helps you relax uh vacations now <laughs> going <laughs> going somewhere where i can just kind of immerse myself in nature and just enjoy the beauty that the earth has to offer, you know, whether or not you believe in God, 
you know, what God has, has created or, you know, what the universe has created, whatever terminology you want to, uh, you know, put to it. I think that's probably what helps you can uh, relax the most is yeah. immersing in nature and kind of just not focusing on what I do every day, you know? Right. Yeah. Very well said. Um, what is a hobby or passion you have outside of TV and film? Uh, oh man, where do I start? I have a lot of expensive <laughs> hobbies, man. Um, I like cars, so I have some expensive vehicles. I like, uh, guns. So I have some expensive guns. Yeah. Uh, I like fashion. So I have like a bunch of expensive clothes like this. There's, there's just so many to pick from, man. Um, but yeah, that's, I'll probably say those are the big three cars, yeah. guns, fashion. Yeah. Um, actually, no, replace guns with tech. I love tech. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm, yeah. I'm always trying to see like what the next technology, technological advancements are like, where we're going because i mean technology is always evolving and it's so fascinating seeing what you can do nowadays like anybody can make any kind of content they want now with with a decent budget so it's it's, it's pretty crazy yeah absolutely yeah uh what fictional character do you relate to or just care deeply about hmm that's a good question i would say and this might be recency bias, but Thorfinn, man, like from Vinland mm -hmm. Saga, like he yeah. was a, a stone cold killer and, you know, his whole purpose was revenge and he wasn't able to accomplish that. And then it's like, okay, well now what, what do I do now? I'm empty now because I have, I, I made my whole purpose and, and goal in life to do this one thing. And I couldn't even achieve that one thing. So now I have nothing. I have yeah. no skills outside of killing so what am I going to do? You know, so seeing Thorfinn's journey from going from a killer to a pacifist, learning about himself, learning how to fill himself with things other than, you know, hatred and, and revenge, like learning how to harness actual emotions and important relationships in life. I think that is something that resonates with me as well. Not that I, you know, was a killer and focused on revenge, but <laughs> yeah. we often set these goals for ourselves, sometimes unrealistic goals and we don't achieve them. And then it's like, okay, well now do I, what do I do now? You know, you made this your whole life's goal and you didn't accomplish it or you couldn't accomplish it. You know, I, I think yeah. people need to give themselves grace and learn how to, you know, pivot when you need yeah, to, you know? Absolutely. So yeah. I would say Thorfinn for sure. Yeah. Perfectly said, man. Well, very well said. Um, what is your guilty pleasure show or film? Hmm. There was, so I like a lot of like slice of life, just like chill, <laughs> like yeah. shows and the anime and stuff. So there was a one that I was watching that I really enjoyed. It's called, uh, what is it? No, Nobunaga Oda Cinnamon or something like that. Oh, it's right, basically yeah. like Nobunaga Oda gets like reincarnated as the <laughs> Shiba Inu and he's yeah. just like going through life as his dog. Uh, yeah. My roommate as a cat was another one that was really good. Uh, I enjoyed that one. So I would just say like those slice of life shows that, you know, don't really make it to the reaction channel. I'll just watch on my own time because, you know, it just makes you feel good. And it's something you can kind of just have on and, and kind of just chill, you know? Yeah. 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 A lot less stress. Easy. Going. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. For sure. Like, I, I don't like being hype all the time. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, there's, there's a time and a place for, for certain shows. So, right. yeah. Uh, what show or film gave you your favorite reaction experience with the channel? <sighs> man. Yeah, that's a good question. Oh, man. <laughs> Ah, uh, I gotta say, prison school, man. Prison school was was yeah. a wild ride, like <laughs> from start to finish, man. It was just crazy. And then a little bit of reactor history. Uh, we actually started a trend with uh the prison school reactions. So we did the prison school reactions, and they mm -hmm. blew up out of nowhere. Like they just skyrocketed, like hundreds of thousands of views. And then yeah. like you know, your boy Roshi started picking it up. Uh, I think a couple other people picked it up. I know Kimchi and Tofu had reacted to it before we did. So I'm not saying that yeah. we were the first ones to ever react to it, but we definitely started that trend where reactors were picking it up. They're like, okay, it's doing numbers. Screw it. Let's, let's jump on the, let's jump on the bandwagon. So yeah, that, that's <laughs> definitely something that, you know, I, I have a sense of pride in for the channel that we were able to do something special like that. Right, so right. yeah, definitely prison yeah. school for sure. Makes sense. Uh, what show or film do you wish you could erase from your memory and react to <laughs> for the first time on camera? Oh man, Garden. Uh, no, Grave of Fireflies, man. Yeah, Grave of Fireflies. Fuck that kid, man. I'm sorry. Excuse my <laughs> French. That dude, man. Dude, are you familiar with the film? Yeah, yeah. He was just such a, a hard headed, ignorant individual. He's like, my pride is not going to let me go back to my aunt 
where I know that we is all I have to do is just follow her house rules. That's all you had to do, bro. Your yeah. sister would still be alive. You would not have been in that situation. Yeah. But your pride got your sister killed. And you're wondering, like, oh, how could this happen? Like, bro, you were feeding her, like, candy scraps and nuts. Like, <laughs> barely that. So what did you expect? Right. So, yeah, great with Fireflies, man. That movie pissed me off, bro. I, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, can't st- I can't stand that movie, man. Right. Uh, well, the final question here is, uh, what advice would you give to your past self if you can go back in time when you first started the channel? Uh, be patient. Everything is not for you. Do not compare yourself to other people and focus on your friends, your family, and your personal health and take vacations yeah. and know that everything will come when it's supposed to come. Perfectly well said, man. Uh, very wise. I appreciate all the insight you gave us today. Uh, Sherm, thank mm-hmm. you so much for being here, man. Uh, it's Absolutely. Been great appreciate you. Getting to know you more. Uh, mm-hmm. Where can we find you online, YouTube, social media, otherwise? Boom. Uh, so for me personally, you can find me on Instagram at Sherm Kage, S-H-E-R-M-K-A-G-E. Uh, I don't really use my Twitter that much, so I'm not even going to worry about plugging that. Um, but for reanimated related content, you can find reanimated uh, at Twitch and Instagram and Twitter at reanimated YT. So R-E-A-N-I-M-A-T-E-D-Y-T. And you can obviously find us at YouTube uh, at Reanimated. And then, oh, I'm sorry, on TikTok, we're also Reanimated YT. Right, right. So, yep. And yeah, we'll have all those links down below, of course. Awesome, uh, you can find you. us here every Monday uh, at Passion Fruit Creators. Uh, if you're following us on YouTube, let's please like, subscribe, all that good stuff. You can also find us at our new Patreon, uh, Passion Fruit for Us, where we have uh, special interviews and workshops with people in the uh, content creation space just to help people out trying to learn and grow their channels as well. Uh, if you find us on the Passion Fruit newsletter, please subscribe there and share that as well. We like all the new numbers there as, as always. And we'll catch you guys on the next episode. Absolutely.